Right, the Turbo German Rig, one of my all-round favourite bottom bait presentation rigs. Preferably, I like to use this with a wafter. I definitely get the best hook holes with it. Now, I don't claim to have invented this rig by any means. It's been on the scene now for some years. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to tie it and how to get the best from it. And also, a lot of people say it's very similar to the Ronnie rig, but there are some slight tweaks on there and some adjustments that we make. So what I'm gonna do now is show you how to tie it. Right, starting with the boom section, for me, I usually use this with Mirage fluorocarbon in 20 pound. It's nice and supple, um, but it also just has enough poke in it just to kick it away uh, when it lands on the bottom. Now, if you're fishing in a snaggy situation, obviously something like this could get you cut off. So I would advise maybe using ultra skin or uh, another coated hook link material that's definitely not gonna get you cut off if there's zebra mussels, swan mussels, or uh, it's gonna sort of try and get you in any snag. So starting off for me, I'm gonna start with the Mirage fluorocarbon. Usually what I do is just pull a length and a foot or so, foot and a half long, and cut that off. Now, this is where I'll tie it onto the swivel. And this is also the difference that you'll see between a Ronnie rig and the Turbo German. Really, it's the same swivel, but with a Ronnie, you'd have the flexi swivel on there. That's then removed for the bottom bait rig. So let's just tie that on. And what I'll do is pass that through. Now, I go four times round when I'm using fluorocarbon. So what I'll do is just pass that through one, two, three, four, then back up and through. And that's very important now that you really get this wet. Sometimes you can actually put this underwater to tie the knot because with fluorocarbon, you've got to be very careful not to burn it because it weakens it. So what we're going to do now is just put a load of saliva on there. Hold on. Right, grab the tail in and slowly tease that down and then what I do is put it back in my mouth again which sounds really rude but and then very gently pull tight till the coils just nudge up nice and neat and there you go that's now tied onto there give that a little tug and remove the tail section now when it comes to the length of the rig itself I found that having it around 12 inches in length seems to get much better hook holes. I seem to get them much further down the back and they're really solid into the bottom. So yeah, like I say, around 12 inches in length. And then what I do is I go tie a big loop like so and just do a figure of eight knot. That's the one I've found to be the strongest. So once over, twice over, get the tail section through there and again, just tease that down, plenty of saliva on there, and put it down nice and tight. Now the reason for the large loop on the end there is either you can loop to loop it through a swivel um, on, on your um, lead clip, or alternatively, I use quick chains, so I can just loop that over, put an anti-tangle sleeve on there, and the idea of that section there is where it's doubled up, that acts as a kick away as the lead lands, that double section there is stronger and it will push the bait away and allow it to land separately from where the lead clip is. So let's just give that a little pull tight. Remove the tail section there. Put that on there like so. Just give that a little tug. And there you go. That is your boom section. Now the beauty of the, uh, the turbo drum is you can keep reusing the boom, um, obviously keep an eye on it, make sure your knots are still good and there's no kinks in there or any weaknesses in the line, but you can keep reusing the boom section. So that's the boom done. And now we're gonna tie on the hook section. Right, my hook of choice for this has always been a size four mugger. Um, for me, it's a strong hook. It's got a slightly wider gape on it, but you can also use the CVR hook as well. A lot of the guys I know use the CVR hook. So, but for me, Confidence is a must, and I'll always stick with my size four trusty muggers. Let's plunk that down there. Right, so for this size four mugger, you need two hook stops and a flexi ring swivel, flexi hook ring swivel, and then obviously your shrink tube. Now, to start first, I'll get one of our hook stops, 
put it on in reverse so that goes over the hook point slide that up without getting myself hold on right and then just pull that one back just near the barb then simply run on your flexi hook swivel over the top then getting your other hook stop this time the other way round and I'll show you the reason why I put two on there as well always just hook the wet, uh, wet the hook point pop that over slide that down now I'll leave everything sitting like this for the moment so you've got your flexi hook swivel and two hook stops on there all right then cut around just over a centimeter of heat shrink I use the XL because I seem to find it sort of allows you to just pull it nice and neatly over the uh, over the swivel. You simply slide that up the shank, then get in the boom section that we made earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. Simply hook that over, then just slide down just to the barrel of the swivel and leave that like so. Now you can steam this with a kettle. If you're very careful and you cover up your hook link, you can get away with doing this with a lighter, which I do have in my pocket, bear me a moment. It's a bit of winter day, so this might be a bit tricky, but I just tend to lick it with a lighter. And what I do is I hang it like that, so the hook point or the actual hook is hanging down. What I find is the curve on that is perfect to switch around when the fish picks it up. So we just lick that over with a lighter. Right. So, now just hold that for a second as well because it takes a little while to set and you don't want to sort of ruin the angle of it whilst it's still hot. So, right, there you go. That's sitting now for me at the perfect angle. Right, going back to the hook stops, the reason I put two on there is that where you've got the shrink tube there, if you don't have a stop, sometimes where the rig hits the water, what it can do, and it's rare that it happens, it could actually end up pushing the flexi hook swivel down to the bottom of the eye of the hook. So by having two on there, I know that that is never gonna happen. And I'll literally nudge that first hook stop right up against the shrink tube there. And again, unlike a Ronnie rig, what you'll usually do is set your second hook stop just opposite barb with the bottom bait or off the version you can go a little bit higher so i'll show you where i usually set mine so it's just above you can go a little further around and that's where i'll set mine and what that does it just allows the bait to move quite naturally and freely along the shank of the hook there and that is the rig tied and then what i'll do now is just simply bait floss on a bait a wafter like I say, you can use a, a, a snowman rig, you can use normal hook baits as well. But for me, I just feel that by using a wafter, it lets that rig act very naturally, unlike, you know, like all the freebies that are around. It's just the fish are grubbing around, the freebies are all wafting around, and with a wafter and the extra weight of all the metalware on the rig, it just lets it act just like one of the freebies that you've got sitting around down there. Right, at the beginning of the video, I was saying that the other advantage of the turbo germ is you can reuse the boom section. Now, obviously check for any kinks, as I said, or check your knots. If you've had a few fish, me personally, I do replace it, but it might have just been that you made a new rig, you cast out, blunted the hook when you're bringing it back on a bit of gravel, and you think, I've got to change that hook. So the beauty of this is, if you just cover up the boom section, obviously, because you're going to be applying heat here, on the coated material, the heat shrink there, just light your light up, leave it on there for a second, I mean, we've still got the wind problem here and literally just heat that up and then you can just pop that off like so and that comes straight off remove that and you're straight back to your boom again and another one that I had sitting there already hook straight on heat up like so And then just set your hook stops, as I showed you earlier. First hook stop all the way down to the heat shrink there. And the other one just above bulb. And there you go, you're up and running again with another rig. 
with a nice sharp hook on it.